fire, uh, it, it goes, it moves, it's, it's powerful. You're made from tin, you're from clay. You fall down on the ground, you, you get headaches, you go up and you go down. I am Jinni, I can move. So he's a racist. But he became jealous, Hasad. Hasad came inside of his heart. And Kibiriya. Look at the world today. It is pride, false pride that is separating people. False pride that is making it difficult for people to enjoy this world, to live together in peace. Proud of color, proud of language, proud of uh, uh, your passport, proud of these false things. When if we really look at ourselves, if you really look at your life, what am, what am I proud of? Shortly, all of us, we will have to go down in the ground. A beauty queen, a king, the most beautiful uh, person in the world. She, after a while, she becomes older, and then she passes away, and when they put her in the ground, nobody's going down there, even if she's Miss Universe. They will not go down with her. So what is she proud of? The richest person in the world. He has so much money, he doesn't know what to do with the money. But when he passes away, he can't take it with him. It stays on the earth. So the house that he built was actually not his house. That house was for his children or for the next people who will take over the country. The money that he spent is not really his money. The only thing he will have is his deeds. And so, why are we proud? What do we have to be proud about? We came from a humble place and we will return to a humble place. When we know this, when we realize how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to bring us in this world, and Allah has promised us that if we do righteous deeds, if we submit to Him, if we put our trust in Him, that we could live in happiness forever. Iman and taqwa. Remember, awliya Allah, alladheena amanu wa kanu yataqun. So it is those who believe in Allah, they believe in the presence of their Creator, they believe there is a hereafter, there is something coming, and they have the consciousness of Allah. The second of the qualities, the hasad, the jealousy, envy of each other, envy of the material things. And looking at other people making progress and we feel bad about ourselves. When this happens, the person is denied happiness in this world. And it is said that one of the richest people who ever lived in the world, his name, he was an American man, his name was Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes was so rich, he was unbelievably rich and everybody wanted to be like Howard Hughes. But he was so rich, the people wanted to get his money, he, enemies developed, he became paranoid, and they said at the end of his life, he lived in a room by himself. He was a hermit. He was paranoid of all people and he died by himself. One of the richest people who ever lived. It's fool's paradise. The person won the lottery in Canada one time. He won the lottery and they said he won about $20 million in the whole of Canada stood still. His daughter had the ticket. And everybody said, he's in paradise. He's in Jannah. But the man said, may God help us. He was intelligent. Then they started the call. They wanted his phone number. They wanted to marry his daughter. They wanted to live next to him. And he was so, he had to hide. He had to change his name and hide his identity. So the money which supposed to give him paradise, it gave him hell on earth. So money, when it comes in large amounts like this, it is not necessarily something to be jealous about of people. It's not to be jealous about. I feel sorry for the brothers and sisters in the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam who are burdened with this money. They are burdened with so much money, they don't know what to do, and there are people who are suffering. People who only don't even have one meal per day. 
and yet they are the same Muslims, and you are coming from the nation of a man, and it is said the Prophet ﷺ, when the gold poured into Medina, that he would not sleep until he gave away all of the gold, and then he went to sleep. Until he gave it away. And he asked Allah, he said, I w he wants to die with the poor people, he wants to be raised on the day of resurrection with the fuqara, with the poor. What is he talking about? He's talking about people who are not burdened with the life of this world. They don't give. Yes, there are those amongst his companions who fulfilled the trust of the money. And you look at uh, Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhum. Many of the companions were wealthy people but they gave away their, their wealth in the path of Allah. And so, the amana came to them, the wealth came to them, and they said, how can I give my zakat? How can I give my sadaqah? How can I uh, give my money fi sabilillah? And so, there's nothing to be jealous about. You don't have to be jealous about anybody else. We should look at the situation we have, what we look like, what we have, and say, alhamdulillah. If you can say Alhamdulillah, if you can be satisfied with what you have, then you have something that the richest person does not have. You are actually a king. If you can sleep at night, the person who has no bond, no mortgage, he has no payment of his credit cards, the tax man is not chasing him, his family is not angry with him. He's a leader and his, and his followers are satisfied with him. That person is a king. That is a king in this world. That is a person with contentment. Because the dunya is not controlling him. This is al kayis Mandana nafsa. Wa'amila ni ma'bald al mot. That is the intelligent person. And so if we can be satisfied with what we have and give the responsibility, give from uh, what, we, what we have been given to other people, then inshallah we are making the test. Because the third quality that Imam Malik said, the first is kibba, the second is hasad, and the last is shuh. This is the desires and greed. And now we see what is happening in the world today. The greed. They are talking about the environment. A big conference happened in Copenhagen where they wanted to talk about the environment. It is turning against us now. We have polluted the seas. We have polluted the atmosphere. We have just cut down the, the rainforests. We have destroyed water all around us. Fish are dying by the millions. Animals are becoming extinct. And some people even say, well, no, we didn't do anything. That's just the earth. But the reality is now, because of what we have done, the earth is turning against us. And so they had a large meeting in Copenhagen. They brought all the, 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 the uh, uh, leaders together and they said, Hopenhagen. They said, this is Hopenhagen. But after the meeting, they said, Nopenhagen. <laughs> There's no hope. Why is there no hope? Because what came out of this conference is that 14% is that 10% of the Earth's population is eating 86% of the natural resources. 10% of people, they eat 86, it's 80, uh, 86%. And 90% of the people, they only uh, eat 14%. So a tiny minority of people, they are controlling the wealth in this world. And they are creating inequalities in the world, and the people are forced to cut the trees down, to, you know, to make charcoal and to wood and to do all types of strange things and then we change the atmosphere carbon dioxide uh, comes in and the atmosphere changes and so the, the, 
the issue that people could not agree upon. It was not necessarily uh, that we do something to make the earth greener. But the, but the issue that could not be agreed upon is that the poor people in the world, the majority of the people in the world, they deserve to have an equal amount of access to the natural resources on the face of the planet earth. This could not be agreed upon. And because they could not agree upon the dist equal distribution of wealth, then the conference failed. And so Copenhagen, which the people were hoping to have Copenhagen, then finally became Nopenhagen, and there was no hope for the people at the end. And so the awliya of Allah, those are the ones who have satisfaction. Those are the ones who have contentment. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. They have nothing to be afraid of and nothing to be sad about and grieve in the life of this world. Who are they? الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. They believe and they have taqwa. <coughs> and taqwa is made up of al khawf wal raja. It is made up of hope, of, 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 of fear and hope. There's two things in taqwa. It's the consciousness of Allah. Now think about these two things. There is fear of Allah's punishment and there is hope in the mercy of Allah. And both of these elements make up taqwa. And some people even said, one scholar, they debated the issue and they say, which one is more important? Is khawf more important or is raja? Which is the most important of taqwa? And another great scholar, Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi, he answered the question and he said, it's like saying, um, what's the difference between khubs and ma? What's the difference between bread and water? Which one is more important? If you look at the two, bread satisfies a hungry person and water satisfies a thirsty person. So both of them are important depending upon whether you're hungry or whether you're thirsty. If you are thirsty, you don't want bread. The bread will make you more thirsty. You want water. But if you are starving, you want something solid. So you want the bread. And so they looked at, at, at the boat. They looked at it. Which one of these elements? And different opinions came up. Interesting discussion comes up about these two qualities. This is what we are balancing now in this world. And to a certain extent, we need them both. But the scholars said that in the time of Ma'asiyah, if the sins have become the greatest issue, then the important part of taqwa is khawf. It is fear. That you need to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to be conscious that for every action, there's a reaction. If you do evil things, evil will come back to you. It will come back to you either in this life or will come in the next life. And Masiya today has become the order of the day. Just as we saw what the shaitan, what Yahweh Bilal will do, he will command us to do evil and immorality and to say against Allah that which we know not. And Sadaqallah al it has become a, a system of uh, uh, miseducation coming through the television and the media. A system of miseducation for the younger children, starting with cartoons. It starts with the children's cartoons. Do not allow the children to sit and watch cartoons without being, uh, without you checking it out. Because through these cartoons, they can make a story which is, which is even worse than the movie. Because they create a being. And, and they put racism in that. They will put hatred of women. They will put class consciousness, rich over the poor. They will give all types of message to the children that by the time that child grows up, that child already has a hatred of himself. He's ashamed of his family. He's ashamed of his language. 
He's ashamed of his nation.